everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Today we're going to go through a job setup on the Vertical Machining Center. I originally shot this video during the rigid tapping episode that we did, but I felt that the footage would be better off in its own video, so we're splitting it out into two. I'm going to go through the procedures that I use to set tooling offsets, set fixture offsets for our workpiece, and then how I download my code to my machine. So let's go to the machine and do a setup. We're back at the machine. Let's put our piece of material in that we're going to rigid tap. Just have a piece of quarter inch aluminum plate, just a piece of scrap. Parallels, vise, standard setup. When we did our camming, we told our cam software that our zero will be this edge of the part, not too critical for our demonstration. We're just going to come a half inch down and a half inch in, and then poke a hole and thread it every half inch. So we have our stock installed in the vise. The next thing we need to do is set our tooling offsets. If you recall in a previous series of videos I did on tooling offsets and work offsets, I used the second method that we described and I used the table as my zero reference for all my tool heights. Another added piece of equipment that I picked up that makes tool setting much faster and much more accurate is this little Z-height presetter. Just got a couple of magnets on the bottom of it, a little plunger on the top, and you just drive the tool into it until it reads zero. When this reads zero, this is exactly two inches high. A little bit better than using the paper method or a dowel pin or a gauge block. A little bit more accurate, very repeatable. So let's go through the process of setting up our two tools. Recall on our cam software we're going to need a drill for the drilled hole and then we're going to tap with the tap. So that's going to be tools 10 and 11 for this demonstration. So let's set the tool offsets. I moved my cameras around so hopefully you can see what I'm doing on the console of the machine and then capture also what's happening with the tool setter. This machine has a tool setting mode in it. If we display our tool table, these are all our current tool offsets and diameter offsets that are in the machine. So if we go to the Utilities tab, it has a tool setting cycle, which is very convenient. So we can set our starting tool number. We want to start at tool number 10, and we're going to end at tool number 11. So it will set our length offsets with tool 10 through 11, so two tools. We're going to tell it we're going to jog to the position, and then it says enter height block size. So the machine manufacturer anticipated you using this method of tool offsets. So we can say 2.0, that's the height of our tool setter gauge when it's at zero, and hit enter. Now tool number 10, we're going to start. So we're going to enter the tool diameter. Since it's a drill and a tap, I use tool diameters of zero. Then we're going to locate the length, so two, now the machine says press jog and then jog to the Z height that you want to be zero. So we'll hit jog. I've got to move my table a little bit first. Now we'll start coming down. So 
So I'm at zero on my tool height gauge, and that is negative 12.4201 inches on the Z height. So now all I have to do is hit manual, and now it will record this number, retract the Z, change the tool to the next tool. So it performed the tool change for us. So we're going to do the, the diameter again. We're going to enter a diameter of zero because we have a tap. We're going to locate our length, hit jog, bring our Z back down to our tool setter. We're at zero again on our tool setter. We'll hit manual. And now our tool setting cycle is complete. If we were doing more tools, we could tell it to do all the tools in the tool changer. You can see by using the Z height setter, it really speeds up the, the tool offset setting process. You can set you know 20 tool offsets in a matter of a couple of minutes with the Z, Z height setter. So now for tool 10 and tool 11, we have a minus 14.4201. If you recall, it was minus 12. It added in that two inches of our height setter block for us. So that will give us the accurate tool offset. It's always good to verify your work. So we'll go back and go into manual console mode. And then what we'll do is we'll do a G0. I'll turn the rapid rate down. And then we're going to do a H11, because we have tool 11 in the spindle. And then we'll do a Z, let's just go down to 6 inches to start. Hit enter, start it. We're just going to bring it down slow. Okay, now we can manually jog it the rest of the way, because we don't know if our offset's correct. But if we jog it down to 2 inches, We should see zero on our tool height setter, which we do. We're exactly at zero. So you can see our tool offsets are correct. We'll bring our tool back up, and then we need to set our fixture offsets to locate the zero of our part. So we can do that right now. We're not concerned about accuracy here because we're just drilling a couple of holes. So what I'll do is, while I have this tool set, I'll actually just use this tool to set my Z height. Again, the Z height isn't critical. We're just drilling and tapping a couple of holes. And my Z, and zero my XY. Okay, so that zero is close enough for what we're doing. So our X fixture offset will be minus 2.54 and our Y will be 2.79 for our offsets. Uh, 
our Z offset, we'll just use 4.6354. It's close enough for what we're doing. Okay, so I exited out of manual mode. So now I have the tool offsets set and verified. Now I'm going to enter in those coordinates for our fixture offsets. So let's look at our fixture offsets. Here's my fixture offsets. Now in our, our cam example that we went through, we told it to use work offset 2. The reason why I use 2 is I always leave work offset 1 at all zeros. And that way I know that if I set work offset 1, it will always be relative to the machine coordinate system or on these machines there's another coordinate system in between the two of them called the tool coordinate system but I know it's all zeros so I always start with work offset 2 and then continue from there so we're gonna say a new value for offset 2 we're gonna enter our X value which is minus 2.54 inches our Y value will be 2.79. Our Z value will be 4.6354. And we'll accept. So now you can see we're 2.54 minus 2.54 and then plus 2.79 and Z is 4.6354. Now recall in our tooling and fixture offsets, the Z value will be added to the zero. Our zero is the table, so it's going to lift us up 4.6354 inches. If we want to do the same check on our fixture offsets, we can go back into manual mode. And this time we can do a G0 and a H11 and E2. E2 is this machine's methodology for fixture offsets. That's equivalent to G55, which is fixture offset 2. And then we can go X0, Y0, and then Z, let's do uh, one inch above the part. So now it should take us to the corner of our part and stop one inch above our part. there we go we, ver we verified our tool offsets are correct and our now our fixture offsets are correct so now we can uh, we can machine our part let me show you how I load my my code onto my machine real quick these older machines are a little bit more difficult to deal with than the newer ones they typically just have a serial interface and the serial interface is a little bit ancient and archaic what I did was, is I used an embedded device from National Instruments called a Compact Rio. Way overkill for what we need to do here. But what it allowed me to do is it allowed me to set up a link with my network attached storage, a, a NAS. If you're not familiar with a NAS, basically it's just a hard drive that has an Ethernet plug on it. The C Rio can read the NAS directly and then it can also communicate to the machine. Now the machine language is a little bit weird so we have to do a CD which means change device. What that does is it routes anything that I type on the keyboard out the serial port so that the Compact Rio can see it and read it and then I wrote software that will interpret the commands. You can buy a device that's pre-canned ready to go to do this type of functionality. It, it just wasn't it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, and I had a compact reel laying on the shelf, so it was free, the cost was right, rather than buying something, so this is the route I went. So I need to change my directory, it's already, I have a configuration file that points it to the right directory on the NAS, so I just changed my directory, it's in my test folder. Now it's going to go out and change my folder returns my current path as 
network attached storage, CNC jobs, tests. Now I know my file name is called rigid tap, so then I can do another, every time you do one of these functions you have to change the device back. So I do another change device, and then I do file, and I can just do, I made it so that you don't have to type in the whole file name, you just have to type in a little bit of it, and as long as it's unique, it will load it. So there's the first couple of lines of the file that we generated. I actually generated this the other night. So now we want to load the file on the machine. This machine is very limited in memory. Um, I know a couple of people complain that, oh, my machine only has, you know, a meg of memory. Well, this machine has 44K of memory. That, that's it, 44K. Most of my programs that are cammed have to be drip fed to the machine through DNC, which is also why I went the embedded device route rather than a PC. The stability of the Compact Rio is, is flawless. It's never crashed, it's never locked up. Now that I say that, it probably will. But I've never had any problems with drip feeding and I was able to embed the device directly in the machine cabinet so the serial cable is only about a foot long so I don't have any noise issues or any other issues associated with trying to drip feed from a PC with long serial cables etc etc so this was really a good solution to use so I'm, this file is small so we're going to send it to the machine so I'll change device again and then to send a file to the machine the command is tape input so it's it's TA comma one don't ask me why I have no idea why they use this nomenclature but but that's what it is you get used to it after you use the machine for a while but for the first couple of weeks you're using the machine you, you got the manual and the quick the quick reference t pages next to you so now it just sent the file to the machine it's a very small file so now that the file is in the machine we can look at the file so we'll do a, a program edit so this is our file We'll do a page down. These are our pre-setup lines. If you watch my video on the CAM post processor walkthrough, you'll see how we added these lines into the CAM processor. And then here's our tool select and our fixture offsets. And then we're going to drill our holes. So there's our drill and then our three positions the can cycle cancel and then we should see another tool off, tool change so there's our tap tool 11 and then this is the G code that we went through to actually tap our holes same locations I hope you enjoyed this video on how I set up jobs on my vertical machining center some of the information here could be applied to your circumstances whether you're using a personal CNC or another vertical machining center if you have any questions, feel free to comment or send me an email. Also, if you'd like more information on any of the procedures I used or any of the ancillary equipment that I use, uh, also please feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.